Yakuza Zero, aka the source of that one Baki Matei meme comes from. Rest assured, there's a lot more to this game than just karaoke. This game is jam packed with tons and tons of content that I will go over. But first, the history lesson. Yakuza Zero, also known as Like a Dragon Zero, was originally released in 2015 on the PlayStation 3, 4, and eventually put on Steam and the Xbox One, and whatever the Amazon Luna is. Yeah, Nintendo really pulled the short straw, and the Amazon Luna ended up getting a release, but not the Nintendo Switch. And notice I said originally released. Well, the Yakuza series, made, as made by the legendary Ryuga Gokuto Studios, historically hasn't done well in the West. Many factors go into this, but just know that as a series, Yakuza was on its last leg in the United States until Yakuza Zero dropped in 2017. Two whole years after the initial release. But but the release of this game created widespread buzz over the game and the series as a whole, which eventually led to the Yakuza series getting a lot more recognition and the games to be released globally opposed to regionally. Story. We start one fateful night when one of our protagonists, Cosma Kiryu, ends up doing a basic collections job for a loan shark and ends up getting framed for murder. This causes Kiryu to be kicked out of the Yakuza, but now Kiryu has to not only rejoin the Yakuza, but clear his name of the murder, figuring out the mystery of the empty lot. The other story with Goro Majima starts off in the, in the Grand Cabaret, which he manages, when he is told that he has to assassinate a blind lady na named Makoto. As it turns out, Goro Majima doesn't want to complete the assassination, now Goro Majima has to find a way to rejoin the Yakuza while also trying to figure out why there was a hit put out for Makoto. This is just a small whiff of the plot, and since it's so long with a bunch of twists and turns, I can't and won't go over the entirety of the plot, but it's definitely real interesting. Gameplay. Yakuza's core gameplay is, in is incredibly easy to pick up, hard to master action game with small RPG elements sprinkled in. To explain, as Kiri and Majima, you start off with a small moveset and can spend money to earn more moves to use as you play through the game. The game opens up as you learn how to use the tools you're given to become more proficient at busting heads. A typical encounter starts with you minding your own business, heading over to the karaoke bar or something when some guy ends up stopping you. And then, using your best problem solving skills, you proceed to turn yourself and the environment around you into your own weapon to deal with any enemies that may have tried to shake you down. That's right, this game isn't Japanese Grand Theft Auto. You don't start fights, but you definitely end them. In fact, most of your gameplay ends up being some random activities you can get up to while you're in Kamarucho or Sotenbori. Though, I'll we'll go over side activities later. As for combat as Kiryu, you have your basic and versatile brawler style. It's simple and effective, allowing you to pick up and use items and weapons you may find. It's not too slow or fast and does a pretty good damage and has some pretty cool moves. Next you have your rush style. It's a fast style that lets you fly around your enemies and later cancel your combo with a dodge and even weave through damage, though Kiryu can't use any weapons. And your last style that you unlock by normal means is your beast style. This style is super strong but in very slow and has the added benefit of super armor and allows you to pick up items around you automatically. Next we have Goro Majima and his styles. His first style works a lot like Kiri's first style, his thug style. Not much more to say, but it does feel different and distinct from Kiryu's brawler style. Next we have his slugger style, which equips the Mad Dog with a metal baseball bat and allows you to go absolutely crazy with the weapons and perform absolutely dirty combos. Finally we have his breaker style, which allows you to dance around your enemies and quite literally style on them using break dancing for self defense. With each character's three styles you can do a lot. But true mastery comes from using all three styles in tandem and to absolutely devastate any enemies you come across. One cool mechanic in this game is heat. Heat is a thing you mostly gain from combat, though it can be increased through other methods and basically allows you to perform some absolutely crazy moves that have their own unique animations that also do insane amounts of damage. Heat is also used for a lot more of the deadly moves in each character's base moveset. Heat is great because it directly rewards you for being aggressive, and it comes with benefits like increased speed and dual more damage per hit. 
This leads to a lot more risk reward gameplay. Do you save your heat for more damage on your basic attacks? Or do you use it up to do more damage with one big attack? On top of that, heat drains when you take damage or when you aren't attacking, further promoting the more aggressive playstyle. I have been leaving two special styles out. The Legend Styles These styles are gained by completing the Real Estate Royale and Carburate Sar modes, respectively. Kiryu style is known as the Dragon style and gives you a small taste of what Kiryu is capable of in the future. Its combos are real fun and it has tons of options. Majima style is known as the Mad Dog style and is absolutely fun, allowing you to quickly dart between enemies with Majima's Demon Fire Dagger, which doesn't break and it does incredible damage while also having one of my heat favorite heat actions in the game. Both styles are really good and can be only activated through the menu. But is it worth what you have to do to unlock them? I'll elaborate later on. For now, just know that they are incredibly good styles that are really fun to use. As you progress through the game, you get tons of money which of course can be used throughout the game in many ways. One of the most important ways is being leveling up your skill sets. Investing in yourself in the most literal sense gives you more moves to use, more HP, better heat retention, more heat actions, as well as some really cool benefits. Spending money to expand your moveset is actually really cool and fits the 1980s Japan setting, since, during that time, they were going through a period they call the bubble. And knowing this also rationalizes why the enemies drop money. The game even tells you what you could have bought with this money to really put into scale the amount of money you would have earned through this game's runtime. The game allows you to do so much outside of combat. It's at the point where you can describe the game as a Simpsons episode interrupted by The Godfather. Actually, The Godfather Part 2 since that's a prequel. Well, actually a sequel prequel, but you get the point. Some of the stuff you can do consists of visiting the Sega Arcade, enjoying the local food, playing darts and pool, among other activities. I wouldn't be doing this game justice if I didn't bring up quite possibly my favorite side activity. Karaoke! This game allows you to do a small karaoke minigame, which is elevated because the voice actor for Kazuma Kiryu is literally in a band. It's actually called Takia Karuto and Goodfellas, by the way. Could be pronouncing it wrong. That alone would make these minigames legendary. But no, the guys at Ryuga Gokuto Studios decided to go all out and made some incredible cinematics for each song, showing off Kiryu and Nishikiyama in their own 80s rock band and Goro Majima doing whatever you describe this is. I don't know how to describe it, but Majima is clearly killing it. Other than that, you have two extra modes, Real Estate Royale and Carburate Czar. These two modes allow you to unlock the two hidden styles, but I'm going to be real. If you're just doing a marathon and getting all of these modes done in one chapter, it's painful. Another cool mode is Pocket Circuit. You basically make a little race car and race it against a wacky cast of characters and various sub-stories. Sub-stories. Sub-stories are this game's way of putting Kiryu and Majima into some bizarre scenarios. They often show the more human side of Kiryu and Majima and are really funny sometimes. Some of my favorite stub stories in this game includes ones where Kiryu has to teach a band about Yankai culture, and one where Goro Majima ends up having to act as some girl's boyfriend. You get a nice reward at the end of these sub stories, so I recommend doing these things. They tend to also be a great break from the action. Solid track. This game series is known for some absolute zoomer tracks. Some serious bangers, and this game is no stranger. It's got some of my favorite tracks in the series. You got songs that are chilled, and then you have tracks that make you feel like you can beat 30 dudes. A feat that only Kiryu or Majima could do. Seriously, like half these tracks can go on a workout playlist. Final remarks. 
Yakuza 0 is an absolutely goaded game that excels at what it does. It's got great gameplay and well thought out combat mechanics, as well as an incredible soundtrack. The writing and characterization of Kiryu and Majima are incredible. This game has got to be one of my favorite games. While it excels at what it does, the big downsides come from the Carburet Czar and Real Estate Royale modes. They can get very tedious if tackled in one big sitting, and the completion should be spread out through one full playthrough. Other than that, I will say some of my favorite things about this game. My favorite styles were Kiryu Majima or Rush style, and if we aren't counting the Mad Dog style, the Slugger style. My favorite activity in this game is the karaoke minigame. My favorite songs of the soundtrack have to be Receive You, Tech Trance, Rain, and Tusk. My favorite character is Goro Majima, and lastly, my arbitrary rating out of 10 has got to be a solid 9 out of 10. It's near perfect, and I would totally recommend this game and the series as a whole to whoever's watching this.